Well, in this episode of Nobody Can Build a Reliable Modern Vehicle, it looks like Ford's in the news again. 91,000 engines are recalled, the 2.7 and the, the 2.7 liter and the 3 liter EcoBoost engines are breaking intake valves. Let's let's get into it. So the issue is faulty intake valves on the 2.7 liter, 3.0 liter engines in 2021 to 2022 Ford F-150, Broncos, Explorers, Edge, and the Lincoln Aviator and Nautilus II. So here is the NHTSA report. So we'll go through the report real quick and numbers. Looks like 15,835 Ford Broncos are affected. 47,719 Ford F-150s are affected. 2,366 Ford Edge. 14,262 Ford Explorers. 3,355 Lincoln Nautilus, and 7,199 Lincoln Aviators. The engine in affected vehicles may contain intake valves that have a propensity to crack or break. An engine intake valve that fails may lead to catastrophic engine damage, resulting in loss of motive power. Of course, if your valve breaks and falls down into the cylinder, you're gonna have some rattle can mess. So the actual root cause, they say that the engine intake valves may have grinding burn and over specification hardness at the third keeper groove location in the valve. Sounds like they have a weak valve and the keepers are the little indentations in the valve that goes up. So if the if it gets if it's just weak metal in there, um, it can break. If it breaks, everything drops down into the cylinder or pieces will and then you're toast. Engine malfunction indicator lamp will illuminate on the cluster and, and you'll have to pull your vehicle over before you lose power. So this is just another example. I know this is, the, this is gonna be a short video, just like the Tundra videos we do. You know, I'm looking at all of these failures in new Tundras and, and the F-150s, what, whatever it is, these Broncos, and they all just point to manufacturers reducing the thickness on metals, right? We've had aluminum parts in engines for a long time that didn't fail but the thickness and, and the specifications were correct. Now you just see failure after failure, it seems like on all of these modern engines, look at the Tacoma's uh, shock issue. They just, they're, they're slimming everything down to the point where it can't handle anything out of spec, like even 1% out of spec and then something's gonna break. So um, I don't know, this is just frustrating. If you got one of these Broncos F-150s, uh, at least Ford's going to replace it. They're probably gonna replace the engine for you. In my opinion, all these manufacturers, I wouldn't trust any of these modern engines. Here's an example, you know, they, they have that lawsuit. I think it just got dismissed. Uh, the Hemi Tick lawsuit in the Gen 3 5.7 liter Hemis. I mean, look at how many vehicles it affected. 14 through 16 300s, the 14 through 16 Challengers, 14 through 16 Chargers. 14 through 21 Durangos, you know, 2014 to 2022 Ram 1500s and or 2500s, 3500s, and the 2014 to 2020 1500s. I mean, it's you know they talk about rough idling, uh, surging, all these problems. They start to hear a tick, and then eventually it's going to turn into knocking, and and then finally a failure. You got GM with their uh, transmission lawsuit, the 8-speed, the 8L45, and the 8L90. All those years of Yukons, you know, Canyon Sierras. All these people that are filing a class action for problems with those. Now the 10 speeds having a problem. You know, General Motors has had these active fuel management problems with their V8s for a long time, lifter issues. Uh, it, man, it just Ford, GM, Toyota, Ram, it just doesn't seem to matter. Everybody is having their own problems. So my best advice for anybody who is looking for a new or used car, me personally, I would probably avoid a new car unless you just you know you're okay with potential problems and you want to you want to take that chance that's that's fine uh, you got a warranty but most new cars and trucks anymore are just a total crapshoot but for me if i'm looking at trying to find a reliable car it feels like a daunting task but if you look at something that's maybe beyond four or five years old you can generally start to see a track record for vehicles and by four or five years old you start to see if there's any trends like catastrophic trends and then you know if you've got a car, it's sad to say it, but man, when you look at a five or six year old car with maybe 60, 70,000 miles on it, that's probably a better bet than a lot of these new vehicles. So I don't know, that's, that's my recommendation. It's, I got a, a couple of videos coming out on how to look at used cars and just check the entire used car out. Hopefully that'll help some people out. But uh, anyway, till next time, thanks for watching.